Too bad we're doing it. What's up, all you nerds and turds? It's me, it's Steve, it's him, it's Andy, it's him, it's Matt, and this is Indies Nuts Podcast, the internet's number one indie gaming news, reviews, and previews podcast brought to you by our Patreon supporters, patreon.com. That's right. It's all, we're, we are completely independently funded because of patreon.com slash dual screens, and we can't thank our Patreon producers enough, Colton the Apprentice, Nestler, and FNH. Paul, this is... Indies nuts, and I cannot wait to get into the show tonight, fellers. We the the band is back to 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 together. You know what I mean? The boys were in effect. Yeah, I I did a show, then me and Matt did a show. Yep. Actually, I think me and Matt did two shows. Right? Yeah, we did two in a row. We did a, I did a solo, then we did two in a row, and now we have Andy back because Hell Week is finally over. Oh good that is, God! That is job. You poor man. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm so tired. sorry for you. Running yeah. in all of the fumes right now, you guys. I'm like, by sheer will, I'm awake I, right now. I believe that. You know what almost happened tonight for the first time in. I look good. Three months, maybe. Look really good. Two months, <laughs> two over two months for sure. What's that? We almost recorded a dual screens podcast tonight. Yeah. That's going to be weird tomorrow. Maybe. Tomorrow's going to be the it's first been, time. I think it's been more than two months. I, I, it's, I think it's closer to three. Like we yeah. stocked so many episodes before uh, August. We did like 12 right after PAX, I feel. Because it was like fresh off that. Well, yeah, we did we that. All these people. We did more than 12. Okay. Um, I think I think we did 14. We still got more in the can. We do. <laughs> We do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. We have a lot to get into, but first we're going to tell you what's new on dual screens. We mentioned it last week, but uh, we have a new editor, a reviews editor. Uh, Sonny Rads has joined the team. And Andy, there is a review going up very soon. If if it's not already up, I don't think it is. But a review yep, yep. from Sonny Rads. So uh, when, when could we expect that to go up and what's the review for? Uh, tomorrow, bright and early. Bright and early tomorrow. Nice. Very exciting. Cor- Coral Island. Coral Island. Friends That's right. Of the show. Friends of the show. Um, I'm hoping to turn that review, you know, I'll cut it down and, and turn it into a little uh, video review because we have plenty. There's plenty of B-roll out there that I could splice together something nice. So hopefully we'll have that also on the YouTube's is uh, Sonny Rads is also working on another game. Pre- this is more of a preview, though. I- oh, no, is it? a re- No, it's a review. It's a review. And also uh, Taylor. Is getting back in the writing game. He's going to be writing an early access preview um, for a game that I forget the name of because it was earlier today. Hold on, I do, I do have it here. I'm like, I'm so proud. Of I know. That's, that's, that's some content. Stuff. We get some like, content. Yeah, we're gonna ha- we're gonna have stuff. I I I ha- did I have to beg him? Maybe it's of <laughs> blades and tails. Of blades and tails. It's, a, and Matt's it's doing stuff too. I heard Matt's writing stuff. Matt, yeah, you got you got to sign something too, Matt's bud. Got, Matt, you got Matt's a boomer got shooter you're doing. I'm writing that, or I'm bringing it here. What I it is for podcast discussion and review. Okay. <laughs> and review. Early, early impressions. Sure. Great. Okay. Great. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. You goofus. Uh, let's get into the indie game. Adventures, adventures, adventures. I played a really old game that I had on my, um, in my Steam library from like a weird, like it was either Humble Bundle or like Indie Gala or Fanatical, whatever. I buy a ton of games, like those game packages. And I'm like, oh, this looks interesting. I'll keep that one for myself. And the others I, I give away on, on stream. And uh, I played this game called Alien Rage. And we're going to get into our new screen here. Hey. Uh, here we go, Andy. This is the first time you're seeing this, huh? Oh my God! Da, 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 da. It's sexy. Now, why is it all askew though? It's so sexy. Oh, because this one has a banner. That's annoying. Oh my God, Stephen! Literally. Oh, that's so annoying. Today on our YouTube channel, some guy was like on an interview. Literally zero gameplay footage. It's like, well, shut up. Of what? <laughs> It was an interview we did, and some guy was like in the comment section, literally zero gameplay footage. Did we say there was going to be gameplay footage? Shut, I was like, shut up. We don't do that yet. <laughs> we did it like twice. <laughs> yeah, it's an it's a podcast. Uh, whatever. Anyway, I played I, I Alien know, I know, I know. Alien Rage Unlimited. 
let me tell you, this game is fucking crazy. <laughs> it is a boomer shooter, uh, but it is made in the with the um, idea of it being an arcade shooter. Um, it's level based, so you go from point A to point B, and you're trying to get to the to the end of the level, and then you get scored on your on your uh, uh, performance. Um, it looks really good. I actually had to turn it down quite a bit to get my stream not to fucking blow up, but mm -hmm. turned it up afterwards and played it for a little bit. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Gunplay is really fun. Uh, the guns that I got to play with are, are pretty cool. This game came out in 2013. Wow. It Two looks that good? Yeah, it does. Like the lighting is great. The effects are great. The, the, the atmospheres, although kind of generic they they look really good though i mean it just it looks like the character models are dated character models are definitely like early ps4 late ps3 style stuff um but it's still just a it, it was fun now here's the thing though because it has arcade gameplay involved uh in mind it is super cheap like you don't get game overs or anything but you do you die over and over and over and over and over and over again. It's like you can't even tell how much health you have because it's just it's about the screen getting bloody and black and white. So the screen will just you'll just get shot like four or five times and you're dead. Um, I'm playing it on the normal difficulty. Um, and something they do that's kind of interesting is as you're doing things, you, you're getting you're getting scored, right? So you, there's a score in the top left screen. It's just points. It's just numbers. You get a headshot, you get some point, you get some score, you get, you know, you kill guys, you get a score, you blow shit up, you get a score, you find uh, hidden items, you get score. And as your score goes up, you unlock, um, like power ups for your character. You unlock a, like a little abilities, like the one I picked was, and you could swap them out on the fly, uh, or between levels. Uh, the one I picked is, oh no, you could do it on the fly. Uh, I picked like getting 50% more ammo with, that you could hold. There's also, you could have 50% more in your clip as opposed to picked up. So you'll go, you know, your magazine will last longer and stuff like that. So as you're playing, you're unlocking these permutations that you can add to your character. Um, but it is cheap as fuck. Like the splash ja damage that the enemies do is ridiculous. Everything you do, if you're too close to it, you will take damage and die like eat immediately. Um, it's it's super super cheap. It, it it feels like a game that is meant to take your quarters, um, but it doesn't have quarters. So there's that. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask that. Like, is it like you're playing House of the Dead, standing up with a gun con cheap, like where you know you come around a corner, it's like, oh, this is the corner that kills you, so that you pump more money into the machine. Exactly, exactly. Like the the first boss battle is like they surround the whole level with explosives. Like the whole level is like things that you could shoot and they explode. However, when one explodes, they all explode mm. and you're like, okay, so you shoot them. They all explode. The guy takes minimal damage. And now you have no explosives that you could use as the guy, as you're walking the guy around the level. Cause God forbid you're behind a pillar and he shoots the bomb that's attached to it. They all go off around you and you die. <laughs> like the whole level explodes and you're like, okay, well I'm, I'm dead now. Um, I was yelling a lot. I was yelling a lot and you could watch that on twitch.tv slash bad child. The video, the VOD from yesterday, I think it was. Yeah. Yesterday. I just, I just want to, I want to note the, the hockey fight happening in the background. <laughs> oh, you can see that on the other camera. Hi, we can, we can you can see that. Yeah. Yeah. I have them on a camera over here and the game is yeah. over here. So, um, yeah, I can't, I can't get over the name. It's like, when a new alien film comes out <laughs> and, and like the generic wannabe ripoff comes out on Netflix, like in the library, alien, alien rage. rage unlimited. Yeah, this, this definitely feels like a DVD that was like tucked away. In yeah, a corner. absolutely. Oh, yeah, sir. Right. Absolutely. Um, anyway, Undungeon. let's talk about it. All right. So I gave some very early and very small, uh, insight last week and uh, just to recap like this is a kind of diablo styled like top down um third person action adventure game um you can pick up gear just like diablo uh where it enhances your 
uh, skills or your damage, but also will change like what attacks you do based on what weapon you have. But the deeper level is that you can also pick up organs and put them inside yourself, and these all give you buffs as well. Mm. And on top of that, your character also has this thing called a core, and you can swap your core out, and those all have different upgrades that you can place into them as well. So there's runes that go into cores that modify the cores, and the cores have a different amount of uh, space for runes. Then there's organs you can pick up to enhance your character directly, and then weapons that you can pick up. Uh, and are there mods for the weapons? Yeah, there's all kinds of different stuff. See, uh, th this game is crazy. <laughs> and, and like, you have, like, six weapons at a time. There's, like, uh, you know, like, throwing knives and bombs and grenades and then, like, a block, like a, a parry block and, like, a heart attack. It's crazy. But so um, you are a herald uh, of the universe. The universe uh, and all its parallel dimensions are being pulled into some kind of a black hole. And heralds are called... Um, when this kind of a cataclysmic event happens, uh, they're kind of the saviors of the world. And so you're walking around and they're like, oh my God, Harold, you've come. Like, I knew you would come, uh, you know, um, you're going to save us all, yada, yada, yada. The writing in this game, holy shit, is it amazing. Um, Ooh. It is so good. Don't, um, don't, don't fuck with me, Matt. Uh, so, so it's all, it's all, uh, you, you have to read it all, but the writing is so good. Like the description. I can the read character. <laughs> no, I know. I, I just don't want you to think you're walking into like a really well voice acted something. Oh no, no, no. Um, I've, see, I've seen gameplay of this. <laughs> but the the writing is so good. Um and like the dialogue trees are awesome. My favorite parts though are like the the description text between blocks of of like exposition where it's like describing how the monster or organism that you're talking to uh is is reacting. It'll be like uh, and the Devadick puffs uh, smoke from his mantle and the slime oozes off of his side and you can tell that he's exasperated. And like, it's just these like, I actually took a screenshot, I think of one of them. That nice read. flavor text. It's just beautiful, beautiful flavor text. Mm. And I'm still stuck on Devadick oozing. It's not actually even a thing. I made that up right now. I love, I love a Devadick. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's a, uh, I felt so compelled by the writing of this team that I took a screenshot so that I could bring it here. So this is um, this is like a uh, it, literally a guy that's been waiting in the, uh, the the wasteland for you. And like you actually ask him, you're like, so like, have you been just like waiting here for me the whole time? And he's like, listen, some of us have like really important jobs, like saving the universe. Some of us stand around and wait for the saviors of the universe, and that's our fucking lot in life. But so this is the flavor text, uh, one of the flavor texts uh, that goes along with this. The being's core is tangible, almost like the core of a herald. The being doesn't seem old, but it emanates antiquity. One of the being's hands hold an holds an elongated chalice. Thick steam from aromatic oil swirls inside the chalice, and the being inhales it deeply then looks at you without exhaling. And it's just like beautiful writing. Is this a like text that. As like a text adventure? That's what it reads like. You, you, so descriptive. Uh, Undungeon's like a year old game, but it's come, it came out to, I think it came out to a console recently, I think. I don't remember. But, yeah. um, but so it's, it's like this really beautiful, like it really is like all of, all of the dialogue that I've come across so far is that good. There's a ton of different awesome characters. Um, and then the way that the game plays out, aside from the combat, so your combat happens all in these like kind of little arena spaces, but you have this giant open world that you explore where it's almost kind of like like Link traveling the overworld in like uh, Zelda Two, kind of like that, mm -hmm. where you not exactly, but like you pick a place to go to, your your guy will travel there. And on the way, you might just like fog of war might dissipate, and you might discover something else. Time passes as you as you go as well. So like, there's a day night cycle, and the world is gigantic that I've explored so far. It is huge. It might not be the most detailed open world, but it's still pretty cool. Um, and then there are also like consequences for your actions. There's like a whole karma system that's built into this game. Um, one of the cooler things is there's like time missions as well. So like the first mission that I got aside from hey, teleport into the universe and start saving it. 
uh, was there were these scouts that had been like led out by one of their scout masters um, to take on like a really angry fucking red ass scorpion. They were like, all right, we're trained enough. Turns out not so much. Uh, they all got wrecked and a bunch of them uh, were kind of like strewn throughout the world. So you're tasked with going to get them, but you only have seven days to do so. So like you have to find them pretty quick and also destroy that area like kill all the enemies in that area and save them and lead them out safely. Uh, and I thought that was really cool. Um, I'm not like super far into the game yet still, but I'm far enough to know that I'm definitely going to play more of it. Uh, and it's, it's a really, really compelling game. I will say the first like five minutes are kind of slow because you don't really know the meat of the game. Like you don't understand how deep the game is, but once the writing starts and once you see how deep the rpg systems are um it is it is really really enthralling um and i would highly recommend even for however old this game actually is i think you said a year or two old it's a year it's a year on steam and i believe it was just released recently on p that you're playing on playstation 4 i believe or you or that was why they were put sending out keys i don't know if you were playing it on steam or ps4 but um that's what they were I, I i i literally if you're like a sci-fi nerd if you like good writing um just it's it's such a good game just w well worth your time definitely check it out uh all right andy since we don't have any links for the shit you've been playing we're just gonna go back to the other screen what i'm playing stuff yeah but you don't have links so i can't put screens oh. screens up um what are you oh, playing fine really quick so though Undungeon, yes, yes. Undungeon is on Game Pass if you want to check it out. Mm. Yeah, it, three weeks ago, uh, they they put out their Switch PS4 um, launch trailer. So this is, it's coming, it's in consoles now. So new audience is, is experiencing the game for the first time. So there you go. All right, Andreas, tell me about okay. what you've been playing. Ansel. Well, the reason why my game is like hidden from the dock is because uh, I want to play a quick, a really quick, game with the both of you okay am i am i describing a game or a weekend on fire island <laughs> jamming my fist into a moist hole which one of those is a game <laughs> All right, I, I, have two, I have two questions for you uh before i answer go ahead how much alcohol was involved uh and what time is it I don't think you need much to get there. <laughs> so I've been playing Scorn. And uh, Yes, Scorn. I've Scorn. been watching a lot of people play Scorn. I've been playing play Scorn. So that game I... is wet. <laughs> 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 that game That's why I use the word moist. Is That's, I think that is like the key word. Very wet. <laughs> so I really did not want to come back on the show and then <laughs> bitch about another game I've been playing lately because I bitched about Moonscars the last time I came on this show. But if you want to bitch about Power I'm, Princess, I'm gonna, though, I'm we, gonna we can bitch talk. A, I'm going to bitch about Scorn. Oh, uh, you're going to bitch about You don't like it? I don't like Scorn. Oh, boy. I really... I, I'm, oh, very man. Let, I'm very let down by it. Um, I think it's like all... It's all style, no substance. You're just walking around jamming your hand into holes <laughs> aimlessly with no context and no like <laughs> no real like guidance and you shoot some shit every now and then and it's like it really proves why I love Game Pass so much because if I spent 40 bucks on this game because I would have because I, I, I love the look of it this like fleshy mechanical thing going on this you know HR Geiger look of it I was sold on that, but I did. I was like, I don't like this game. Like, it's it's nice to walk around in it. It's like it's like almost a walking sim. I feel. Yeah, it's 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 a lot about yeah. the atmosphere. It's very little right. about right. the gameplay or right. like the action. I feel kind of like I was really excited for this game, and I'm bummed to hear that you don't like it. Because if mm -hmm. you don't like it, I would pretty much guarantee that i'm not gonna like it mm -hmm. um but now that i think of it when they were like showing this game off towards the lead up of its mm -hmm. release and just mm -hmm. even when it was announced 
they really didn't show any gameplay. It literally was like they literally just showed wet. Yeah, things. it was like here's some fleshy wet walls. It's like <laughs> ooh, look how pretty it is, and like you know they they showed they show combat. So I'm thinking it was like like a sci-fi fps on this like fleshy like hellscape planet thing yep. and i'm like why am i just walking around aimlessly through these like you know butthole corridors <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> what is going on <laughs> and it's like again this is why i love game pass because it's like thank you for this it's like save 40 bucks but uh yeah it's like a game that i thought was like a totally for me game and i'm like I am going to uninstall this and like put it away. I don't. It's not even scary though. Like it's just it unsettling. It isn't. And it's, it's like it, once you, you're in there for like a good like 10 minutes, it's like you get past like the visuals of it. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's always trying to shock you and none of it is like it makes any sense. When it's the just, whole, when the whole world is like, gross, I, yeah. I, fe I feel like it's yep. disgusting imagery for the sake of that right. shock. Not like, a Silent Hill, there's a purpose and a meaning behind what this thing you're looking at is. Like, there's a deeper meaning. It's like, nah, it's like, let's, let's just throw some fleshy bits and machine parts and mesh they, them like, together. They had a really, 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 really narrow target audience. Put it through They're a blender. Like, hey, remember those people from 2011 who all decided that the word moist would makes people uncomfortable? Uh, <laughs> that's our target audience for scaring here. We're just going to yeah. terrify those people. Yeah, it's just like I believe I don't it. know. I was just very let down by it. Um it was a little heartbreaking because I was following the game for a very long time. Yeah. And um I saw the scores, I was like, nah, screw these scores. They don't they don't they don't get this game. I'll get this game. I'll understand it. I'll enjoy it. Fucking did not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> And, and maybe that was their point. Maybe yeah. maybe that's what they were trying to that's do. That's the art, yeah. Andy. They were trying to make a game that people don't just, like playing. I could just watch. Kind of like yeah. Death Stranding. Oh. Just an uncomfortable experience for anybody with ADHD <laughs> and OCD. At least that game had gameplay. That's true. You could you could do you could do things. The buttons did things in that game. That is true. That is true. Uh, Andy, what else yeah. you playing? Anything else? Oh, and Dome Keeper. Dome Keeper, I feel like. Yeah. My whole house loves it. Ken is always like, can you put that Dome game on again? <laughs> but he wants to watch his stories? Like, he what? loves watching me play it. You know what's really funny is that so he loves sometimes, the anxiety of it. Sometimes Grayson will like hang out beside me while I'm playing computer games. And the two games that he requests all the time are Forgive Me Father, like the brutal oh boomer God. shooter, yeah, sure. Italian yeah. noir game. <laughs> yep, of course. Dome Keeper. <laughs> And he says, he says, can you play the dig game? I'm like, yeah, I can play the digging game. Let's go. And then when the monsters come, he he's fucking amped every single time. <laughs> he's like, get him! Get him! You gotta shoot him! Oh, look at the cute little bubble ones! Look at the cute little bubble! Shoot that guy! <laughs> fucking amazing every single time. That's exactly what Ken says. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> you, you love to see it. You do. You really do love to see it. All right, it's not. It's my turn. It is your turn. We're talking. We're talking Tower Princess. We're, oh boy. We are. We're talking about it. And do you know, beautiful, we have a differing a beautiful opinions transition. Of this game. Uh, I. 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 Here's the thing, though. It, because it has a banner ad, I have to redo the window. But anyway, it's fine. We're garbage truck truck on fire over here. Uh that's what we do best. Tower Princess is a. Uh, 3D platformer action roguelike roguelike RPG and it's fun it's challenging you start off as um you could you start off as a as an as a knight either with a sword or you could choose the shooting the shooty guy um the names are kind of funny and goofy uh you rescue princesses or princes and those princes or princesses, you can then take one of them with you on your run and they will give you a special ability. Um, they, they, they vary. Like one of them will shoot. It's my favorite one so far. It's the penguin princess. And she shoots these three penguins. She has three penguins that are on her at all times and she'll throw them down and they'll slide on their stomachs, knocking things down. And then at the end, they explode. 
and freeze or, you know, freeze characters that can be frozen or slow them down or whatever. You could also trigger the explosion early if you just press uh, the left bumper and stuff. Um, it's really funny. Like the, the characters are really quirky. Um, boss Didn't battle. Mention the, the princess is being basically alligators. Well, no, that was one. That was only the kobold. Oh, okay. That was kobold princess. That's the first princess that you get. Oh, there's um, multiple princesses. There's yeah. all they're, they're all scattered throughout, and it's random which ones you find. Uh, you oh, rescue cool. them, and then they they all go back to the town, and then you could basically take them with you on your next run after you rescue them. So, like, there's one dude um, who gives you the ability to he gives you like a fire sword or like something like that. So, like, I if I know that I need range but there might be a, a battle where I'm going to need some melee. I'll bring him with me and he'll give me that melee ability for, as his power up. There's another one. There's the human princess who is a total bitch. Um, <laughs> but her ability is that she, she'll give you rewards based on how good you do in the time she gives you to do it. So like you hit the, you hit the left bumper and she's like, let's see what you got. Eh. That was her on the screen, by the way. And it, it a little, all your enemies turn gold and you're trying to kill as many as possible. And the more you kill or the more difficult they are that you kill, she'll give you better drops. And, uh, those, you have, uh, four item slots. Some of them give you passive abilities. Some of them are, uh, use one time use items. Some of them are multiple, multiple use items, like, uh, traps that you could throw on the floor, potions, um, special ranged abilities, bombs. Uh, can I, can I ask you what platform did you play this on? I play this on steam. Okay, so maybe I had a shitty experience because I actually bought this on sale on Switch. Oh, okay. And it is not optimized at all. It runs Ooh. at like a really low resolution. It that, yeah, like, that doesn't surprise me because it, it definitely... It looks like ass on the Switch. It looks terrible. <laughs> like, if you're going to buy this game, don't buy it on Switch because it is a terrible, terrible port. Yeah, I could get this thing running up to 200 plus frames a second on my on my high refresh monitor mm -hmm. um but i playing it i was playing it at 60 uh and i had to lower it to 30 because again my 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 computer had an update that i didn't know it had so like it was just at, all games were running really slow and really shitty when i was streaming at the same time so um but i bumped it up afterward and and it and no it runs great it, the platforming's great there's so much shit going on on the screen especially during boss battles uh really clever boss battle the first one that i got through um but but I don't think the rogue aspects of it are good enough to keep you wanting to go on more runs. Mm -hmm. There's yes, there's princesses and princes that you're going to want to rescue and, you know, see where, how far you can go. Um, but you have to start over a little bit too much. And in, in a sense that um, you're not, your the increments in which you are improving are not vast enough, no matter how far you get in, um, into a run. Um, like you, you will eventually uh, unlock shortcuts so that you could go to the next level and, and skip the first one. But it, it actually, you know, what it reminds me a lot of. It reminds me of, um, uh, uh fuck, um, Returnal. It, it has that kind of. It's a really odd reset. Yeah, it does, yeah. but it, but that that's the reset that it has. It has okay. this, that reset of, do I want to go through the first level so I could get some items so I'm a little bit better for when I get to the second level, <laughs> or do I want to take the shortcut, just go to the second level, go through that again? There's mazes. There's a lot of platforming. Um, the combat's good, man. It, it plays really good. It's not it's not a bad game. The platforming could, is a little uninspired. It's very a lot of it's been very simple. Uh, I have found myself fighting the controller a little bit when it comes to tight corridors because it pull it does that thing where it like pulls too close to the character because it doesn't want you rotating the camera 360 because you're in a corridor. So like the camera will hit the walls as you're going down. Um, it's like to me, I just kind of want to raise it and pull it back a little bit to give myself a little bit more of a perspective. Um, it gives me a Soulsian vibe when you're going through and you're like, what hell awaits me in this next room <laughs> of, you know, oh, I only have one and a half hearts left and I don't know how much damage a thing does because there's no, there's no consistency. But 
I digress. You, depending on the character you choose, uh, for there's heavy muskets, uh, heavy musketeers, there's heavy swordsmen, there's uh, light swordsmen, medium, you know, mid or whatever they're called. Um, and you level up only that one, but you may not get that option on your next run. So like my best character is the heavy musketeer, but if I die and I go back, I may only have the heavy swordsman and a light musketeer as a, as an availability. So like my level seven character, uh, won't be available to me. So then I'll play as the little light musk and then go in and I'll level that up to like level three and you use your level ups to get things like more health or, uh, new abilities, new, new, new attacks and stuff like that. So that part is really well done as far as the, the replayability and like you wanting to improve these characters, the the meta progression. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just like the, the level progression is not enticing enough. It's almost like, fuck, do I want to do another run? I really don't. I don't want to have to go through that stupid maze again. I don't want to have to do this thing again. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, to be totally honest, that's like the hardest part about making a roguelike in my opinion. I mean, we talked about shovel Knight dig, which is like a big franchise made by fantastic, developer you know a developer that puts out gold and not that that game was bad but it it definitely failed uh being uh you know in being a roguelike and i i think that it's harder to make a good roguelike than people think yeah um yeah i just think that if the levels changed a little bit more where you could be like because it's the the tile sets all are always the same they're just in different spots so you don't know which door is going to lead to which room, but all, but once you've seen all the rooms, you've seen all the rooms. So, you know, that that sh- pain in the ass room is going to be there. No matter how many times you go back in, it's one of the eight rooms you're going to go in. Um, that's, that's like the big issue that I have. Like if it changed it up a little bit more with the level design and made mo- really truly made more random generated encounters, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the, cause it's a platformer. Like there's a lot of platforming in it. So I get, I get that you can't really randomly generate a platforming game, but like the action segments and like the layout of the land, I feel like they could have done a little bit more to, to give some variety to that. I just want to back up for a second. You can totally randomly generate platforming games. There's, no, there's zero problem there. I, you, you can definitely do it. It's you, just done. It's done poorly. The you way, can definitely do it. Yeah, nope. the way they they do it though, the way that they design their platforming, it's more about getting. It's. They're not puzzle like like it's it's more it's it's just. A different. It, it's just making a corridor or a room and removing a bunch of spots to it, so that you if you fall off you die. Like that's the kind of platforming they put in here. Um, so it's like, it's not the platforming philosophy that they have here. Isn't exciting enough where if they move some shit around, it wouldn't necessarily make me, uh, you know, it wouldn't make the experience any better. It would just make the experience a little different. Um, which I guess would, would help, but I think that the, the battle arenas, the, cause there's a lot of rooms where you're just fighting stuff or you're avoiding, um, traps, like if you could randomize that more, the size of the room, the verticality of it, the, where the enemies are, where the traps are, what enemies are in there, um, different stuff that different ways you can get item drops. Cause most of the time you only get item drops from enemies. You don't get them from, and, and chests. Like there's a gajillion barrels and they rarely drop anything. So you just sit there and you're beating up the same pile of barrels over and over again in all of these rooms, hoping that you're going to get a potion drop. Um, Sounds like I'm not going to repick this up on any other platform. <laughs> well, I mean, it's I, I want to see like I want to see the other worlds. <laughs> I want to see the other worlds here because yeah. I really enjoyed the first level mm-hmm. at the castle and I don't like the garden and I want to see what's after that. Um, yeah. I want to see how, you know, where it goes from from there. Uh, the indie steal of the week, ladies and germs. For me, uh, I picked this one. It's going to be uh, Fel Seal, Arbiter's Mark. A fantastic, fantastic turn-based strategy game. Andy, I know you're familiar with this one. Guys, former former, former guest of the yeah. show. Indeed. A really fun interview. He, No joke, he had $10 in his bank account mm-hmm. when this game was on Kickstarter. And it was mm-hmm. like a make or break for him. 
Yep. Uh, it is not playing. I apologize for that. Um, really yeah, funny. this is a tactics uh, inspired. Uh, everything, everything that's a, a turn based strategy game is tactics inspired, but it's really beautiful. Um, 75% off right now. It is seven dollars and forty nine cents, down from thirty dollars. Yeah. Guys, if Matt's buying a Tower Princess game on Switch, you have to go buy this game on Steam. That's just how it works. It's true. <laughs> that yeah. is how it works. Um, you could get the DLC with it for under eleven dollars, ten dollars and seventy three cents right now. Um, you can get the uh, you can complete the bundle by getting their other game, uh, his other game, Revered Knights tactics you get both of those games for 20 bucks so right. so they're doing a little sale there but fell seal is i think we, we had that review on our website i believe I oh think, my god we do i think we do <laughs> yeah yeah i don't remember many, I, don't, I don't remember who reviewed it but <laughs> so definitely someone did <laughs> <laughs> but it's up there um and it's a fantastic <laughs> game so go check that out um all right we got an indie game watch here ladies and gentle germs this is something. Um, I just want to say that we are living in a second golden age <laughs> of Twitch shooters right now. And I fucking love every minute of it. It seems like every time I fucking go on the internet, there's another boomer shooter or another Twitch Quake style shooter. You want a new game fucking coming out? <laughs> and I'm just like, give them all to me. I'll fucking murder anything. It doesn't fucking matter if it's that. <laughs> and I'm shooting, jump and shoot. Let's go. I'm fucking there. Yeah, no, you, 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 uh, this, the, I instantly tag, well, I was going to instantly tag you and you actually messaged before I could. I'm trying to fit this in, in this window because it's a YouTube page. So I do apologize for the video watchers here. I haven't quite right. nailed that. All the video sizes are different, so I can't really help it. Um, but yeah, the, uh, announced, uh, at RazorCon on October 15th. So a couple of days, a few days ago is Exocide. Uh, this is a retro boomer shooter that looks freaking dope it looks so freaking cool oh, oh it's like lo-fi glory uh from our friends what, at Apo my, apogee what is my term of the year low poly high quality Mm -hmm. it's all happening quality, yeah. that's what we've it is all, all right so, year. so this is future guest of the show it has to be this is like we know the people we know the people yeah it's we know happening. them we'll get mad on the show We'll do a full ass interview yeah. and stuff. Let's do it. Um, this game looks so freaking cool, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I love it, it. There's so much personality. Yeah. In just the trailer, like the j just like the atmosphere of what we get, the colors. I, I want to know how the fucking how those weird arms work. I want to know because there's one. <laughs> it looks like the where, darkness, dude. It does. But you like, remember there's one point in the trailer where he like picks something up and yeah. throws it at the enemies. Yeah. Yeah, and we're about just, to get to that, I think. Look at that. Yeah. So good. It, it's it it reminds me of the darkness where you got those stupid little worm things, except this one doesn't have Danzig. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> 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 at least I at least I I hope it doesn't have Danzig. He's gonna show up. He's gonna um, howdy, how's it going? It's me. Oh, there he goes. There he threw the through the cubes things. Uh, it's, uh, we're gonna we're gonna shoot some fucking enemies for you, man. We're gonna shoot these fucking enemies. I'm dancing, mother. Anyway, that's exercise. That looks, that looks really good. Uh, great, great. Pick, looks great pick. freaking cool. Um, also, uh, this one's another one for you. Uh, the hell's your name, Matt? Um. Uh -huh. Turbo Big Overkill Big Episode Big Two, baby! Yo. Woo! 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 If, if, if you didn't like Chainsaw Knees before, you're gonna love them now. <laughs> Gotta love them. Why wouldn't you like them? Uh, this is another announcement from RazorCon. Another one from uh, Apogee. Uh, Apogee. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Dude. This How this is you not be so, in love with this. This is my favorite boomer shooter <laughs> right now. Uh -huh. like, Carving the like, guy's head off. Come it's, on. It's Tony Hawk with fucking saw knees and you're fucking sliding around. Ouch knees, shit yeah. And yeah. Ouchy knees and people yeah. in your fucking face. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of explosions. Oh, he kicked him and he thought he was hanging by his innards. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Anyway, this is episode two. Uh when Turbo Overkill is out. Uh, episode Halloween. one is out right now, and this because this one's coming out on Halloween. So yeah, 
there you go. Good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. We got some play really good things game. coming out. Play this game. Everybody play this game. We got some really cool things. Yo, we, this game was so good, Matt wrote about it. It's true. I actually wrote That's how it's much true. I liked it, is I actually put <laughs> my hands on a keyboard. Put words to paper. And yeah. I, I, I yeah. tiddly and it didn't away. take And it didn't take three years. Um, it didn't. Here's a here's another game that I want you guys to keep your eyes on. It's called Brewmaster. It's a beer brewing simulator. Uh, this is coming on to PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch on October 27th. So just a week from today. Um, I just want you to keep your eyes on it. I don't have a video right now, but uh, just here's some features. You ready? Create the beer of your dreams with a thorough, true to life simulation of brewing chemistry. Use a huge range of ingredients and equipment to create your own recipes, brew different beer styles, and learn the process from start to finish. Anyway, I thought this was a dan- a, a cool ass miss the nuff game to just sit there and just make some damn beer. Yeah. Uh, it's available now on Steam uh, for eighteen US dollars, and it's coming to consoles in a week. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Yes, sir. I do like beer. Sounds way mm-hmm. better than scorn. Yeah, there you go. I wonder. I wonder how detailed it is in like if you could start home brewing after you've played this game for in an amount of time. By the way, I have a question. Sure. It says Turbo Overkill. What you could get? Episode one is available now for for twenty bucks, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Turbo Overkill, which is coming out, or episode two, which is coming out on October thirty first, is early access. Is the whole game early? Is even like episode one also part of like, are they doing all these episodes and then releasing a full game? I haven't checked into it recently, but when I did my review of it, which wasn't super long ago, uh, it was still in early access. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they've been interesting adding to it. Okay. Uh, over time. Okay. Got gotcha. you. New, new mutations yeah. and all, all kinds. Of okay. Things. So episode two is kind of like another level, I guess. Oh, added to it. Well, no, it's like, it's like doom campaigns, right? Like, so like there's, the, the episode one is like a, a group of levels that tells a story. Right. And then episode two is a whole nother campaign. Okay. Well, still dope. Yeah. No, Here, here's a bunch of horse shit. Matt, tell us about this first story about the Stadia. We're getting wait. into the indie news report. Oh, wait. No, we're, we're not. Stop, we're, we're stopping. We're stopping. We're, we're stopping for. Oh, boy. Okay. The regular schedule program. Matt, I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, oh shit. Shiitake. Did you, did, did you put this doc together tonight? I did. Not a single mention of Silent Hill. It's like all indie devs doing their games. What is wrong with you? (laughs) This was Monday. I put this together on Monday. Uh, Andy. 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 You can can add to that. Andy. What kind of host would I be if I wasn't planning on kicking to you for our for the Silent Hills shit? What kind Silent of person? Seconds. What kind of person would I be if I didn't do that? Do you understand me? I don't see it in the doc. No, because I'm a host and I'm gonna host the shit out of it, bro. Just thought of that. Right you gotta now. trust. You gotta I trust me. Mentioned it. I had to mention. You gotta it. trust me. I want that trubbish, but I can't catch it. it. Just it let him do it now. Trap. We're in. The, we're in the Silent Hill trench. No, we're not there yet. We're gonna get back to it. We're gonna oh. do a slow build. We're gonna All do right, a slow fine. build. Tell me about this Stadia bullshit, because this is like really so, sad yeah it is really sad um so i mean i think uh, most people probably watching but uh no but if you don't uh stadia shut down uh, or shutting down effectively um and it took a lot of people you know d- developers specifically by surprise i think people who know google and how how they treat their products probably saw this coming at some point, probably. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's not there's not one podcast that didn't say this is going to be buried in within two years. Yeah, but it it definitely stinks that it seemed so sudden. And yeah. so, um, this uh this studio, Sourcebite Studios, uh, chairman was working on a game. Uh, they were pretty close to their final build of the game, and the uh the the head of the studio basically was on a train ride home and got zero notification prior to this and read in the news that stadia was shutting down so that means that google had not that this should be surprising i guess but like zero communication with any of the developers that this was happening and that 
there probably are tons of developers who were on board for developing Stadia exclusive titles that are now just left in the dust. Uh, I don't know how easy it is to port those things or how that, how that works, but um, it just seems like they really just they really just pulled the rug out from a lot of people. Uh, and it's sad. It's sad that a lot of work went into this. A lot of work went into a lot of these games and that they're going to have nothing to show for it or they're going to have a shit ton of extra work to do getting it onto a different platform. Yeah, and it's... The thing that sucks, I think, uh, you know, on top of everything, is that the reasons why they probably weren't told is because... That's a huge uh, insider trading situation, right? But just have you have have them, just have them find an NDA or something. Yeah, like that. That would be the way around it. But then you're like, I don't know. You're you're running the risk of them saying no. I'm not signing it. And then what? You have no legal recourse. Like you know what I mean? Like for for stuff like that. I think it's just it. it not to make an excuse, not to give them any, any, you know, credit to, you know, whatever, or what, you know, play the devil's advocate. I'm not really even playing the devil's advocate here. I just think that you're damned if you do, damned if you don't in this situation for in, in multiple different scenarios. We look at this from a, an indie dev side because that's what this podcast is. So like we, yeah. we feel for the indie devs, like no matter right. over the multi gajillion dollar okay, alphabet so that, that company. Was be my point is like, yeah. So, all right, so one indie dev or multiple indie devs are like, no, we're not going to fucking sign this, and they out the fact that uh, Stadia is shutting down. Zero people are surprised. Nobody is surprised. <laughs> it becomes a news headline yeah. for a week. Right. And then, you know, wh whatever happens, happens. It's not going to cause Google to fail if this word gets out. People are going to be like, oh, my God, Stadia is shutting down? No way. And then you move on with it. Instead of like this is such worse press than that right like you're you just you you've left so many people with nothing for no reason like you, you just you could have told them you could have said hey maybe reel it in a little bit uh just out of nowhere like having to read it in a news article on the way home yeah it's shitty no, it's so totally shitty. shitty. Yeah, it's totally shitty. I just feel like maybe if we knew these games existed, we would have wanted to buy into stadia. A little bit more because i feel yeah. like you're a marketing i i wasn't sold on it as like okay what am i getting on this service that i can't get anywhere else what's the incentive to buy into stadia yeah and then and then like, xbox like, ate their fucking lunch right but you know you could <laughs> you could you could be like here's like 10 games in the pipeline they're only coming to stadia you know please be excited but we got none of that it was like they had the worst catalog of games you can ever imagine like Again, the games were fine, but just like the selections, like it wasn't worth the cost. Why would I invest? Why would I invest the in that? Yeah. Because I, I right. probably have something else that right. I can play these games. On. We knew the shit was coming with how many of those things they were giving away too. Oh yeah, like I they had, like, they I gave had, like, away four controllers in my house. I'm pretty sure, like <laughs> I don't know what to I'm do with sure, them all. I'm pretty sure <laughs> after it was announced, literally the first thing that everybody thought was like, well, like you said, well, this is gonna be dead in fucking two years because yeah. you know Google. They yeah. were saying day one in that article. Like, they knew like from the first day that I wasn't going to make it. They're like, can we release a game first, please? Yeah, it's nope. it's really, it's it's crazy, and it's a shame, and um, it does. I, I don't think it had to be this way. I really do think that the yeah. other path was the better path. All right, Not we're... even just from, like, a nobility standpoint, but just from, uh, like, a press standpoint. We'll we're we're it. running uh we're running a little long here, so let's just really quickly Dome Keeper, the game we mentioned earlier, has hit one million in revenue, one million dollar reduced. I, I like that update by the way. It's a great update. I like seeing like not just sales, but like we've made this much money off the game. That's how many money dollars. I love it. Dollar bucks. Love um it. Little Devil Inside. Where the hell is this game? Um oh, what the hell? Yeah, disappeared. I ain't coming out this year, guys. Uh, True right, Trophies so I mean, wrote it. Up. Doesn't it have a release date? It had like one in 2016 also. Right. <laughs> or some shit. <laughs> uh, it was supposed to come out the end of 2022. Guess what? Not happening. It's where we are right now. We are officially in the, the last quarter. Um, so we'll see. And in that same vein, where is Party Animals? 
Yo, I thought that was out already. No, they had that one legit that they alpha that or already. beta earlier in the year, uh -huh. but they did have a dev dire dev log on Steam. So I just want to give a little quick update here. It was their fifth log. This came out on September 30th. So 21, 20, 21, 20 days ago. Uh, the game is pretty much in the final stages of development, and our main task is now to fix bugs, optimize performance, and modify some content to comply with national policies and regulations. Um, so there you go. Like, it's coming. Once it goes, it's, you know, content complete, and they're, they're you know, bug. I'm thinking November, late November. I'm thinking this is like a Thanksgiving treat. So a month and, and a week from now. That's what I'm thinking is when we get this. Clickety, clackety, clickety, clackety. Andy, Silent Hill is back. And indie devs are making it. Oh my God, you guys. My heart is filled with so much joy. Mm -hmm. I was holding back all the emotion. Um, But yeah, it's been a long time. Nearly 10 years since we acknowledged this franchise, Konami. And they came back with like full like full force. It was like here's twenty games in a movie. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I think the first thing I want to address is the Silent Hill Two remake. Yes. By yeah. by by Bluebird. Bluebird, which can be great or not great. Which I think I said in the Discord, it's failing upwards. Bluebird is going to get the Silent Hill Two remake. Is they just going to get it? And I have mixed emotions. One is like it looks really good visually yes it looks visually great. stunning the the models look amazing um but it's bloober bloober doesn't do combat which could work because silent hill is about clunky like you're the average joe kind of guy so maybe that could work to their to their advantage a little bit um but there's a blueprint for the game so if they don't deviate from that too much they can't fuck it up because they're not they're not strong writers that team they're good on the visual side but uh, but their writing is like very like generic horror jump scare shit and this game is like the polar opposite it's the antithesis oh you're getting what, additional jump scares and uh, uh, yeah of, of it's what happening Bloopers, what their approach to horror is so again i, lo I love what i saw it's coming at some point to PS5 and PC. Um, super excited about that. Um, but then we got this other game, Annapurna Interactive mm -hmm. and No Code are working on a little indie game called Silent Hill Townfall. And we have no idea what the hell it is. We we will. They announced Soon. it. It um I get no gameplay at all. But no code made a game called observation which i freaking loved so i remember really, that really good developer um and, you know anna perner is like the art house indie publisher so i trust their abilities to like make sure it's like up to snuff and like represent silent hill as best as it can um so that was dope then there was like a weird thing in the showcase this whole like couldn't get through it without a weird thing. The Hill Ascension thing, which I'm still trying to wrap my tiny brain around as to what the fuck it was. <laughs> it's it's a thing that has JJ Abrams, Bad Robot Games, uh, our friends at Behavior Interactive, the Dead by Daylight guys, and some other gaming folks making a live interactive series where you you and your friends are choosing the outcomes of the characters and it's like you can't reset those choices and the, I guess it, it plays out based on those choices and you can shape Silent Hill lore forever with these choices. It was very vague, but I'm intrigued by what it really is. Is it a, is it a game? Is it a show? I wonder if it's like a... You remember... Black Mirror did that the Bandersnatch Yeah, there was episode. an episode, yeah, where you could pick different paths like for like, you know, character actions. Um but the way that they phrased it, I wonder if like I wonder if they're going to take like percentage right and make Oh, it like canon. from all the viewers and like whatever the most the most decided thing was, okay, this is like the thing now. 
that's, like that's, go that's canon. I don't know. That would be crazy. Yeah. It, it's leaning more towards like a show for me, but like you can just say it's a TV show. Like it's a, it's a show, but it was like, it's a live series. Like it, I guess you can't just tune in whenever you want. It's like, you have to be like when it debuts, you have to be like watching it with everyone at the same time. So I don't know. It was interesting. Over under on how many time how many dildos get thrown in this thing if you leave it up to the people. Oh, good lord! <laughs> over under half a dildo. Are we over okay. or under? We're over, way over. Okay, just making <laughs> sure. Over. Before we end this, I would like to make a confession to you, Andy. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I guess say one more thing. The book, go on. Oh, okay, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> and then the oh, the, right. the the coup de gras. The 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 the, the coup de grass. Was, was How, what's the phrase in in Greek for coup de gras? Like for yeah, the cream of the crop for the 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 piece de resistance. Oh my! I don't even know. Like what that is the gabukula gachukulis. That we're gonna go with the bukula gachukulis, which is my uncle's name actually. In case you're wondering, <laughs> <laughs> bukula um, metropolis. Bukula metropolis. Um, silent. Silent, Silent Hill. Hill. No, 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 it's f- f- <laughs> um. So I watched this, and I was like, "What the fuck is this Silent Hill Chia Pet thing that I'm watching right now? <laughs> this like Last of Us meets Fatal Frame thing." And mm-hmm. I'm like, "This isn't Silent Hill at all. What the fuck is this crap? What am, <sighs> what is this? Where's this garbage that I'm seeing? Oh no!" But then it like, I watched it again, and then again. And it really stuck with me. I was like, this is what this series really needs right now. Like a, a wild ass departure to like redefine what we think this franchise is and not like this cover band shit we've been getting free for years from other developers. And it looks really creepy and I want to know more about it. There's like these like weird like plants growing out of people and like vines are attacking the character and I am sitting on something and it is peeling off and even sitting on a dildo. Close, close, close. You ready? You want to see what I was sitting on? (laughs) A dongle. (laughs) Look at that. That's a massage massage gun tip. (laughs) That looks like a mini a mini dilly. I I would I would never mess with this could get stuck. (laughs) That could get stuck. I would never mess with that. That's scary. I don't know, man. You might want to check. There could be a whole side. Andy, Andy, uh, just a final question. Yeah, talk because we have to wrap up. Final question. Let's wrap. Are you happy? I I actually really am. Okay. I could have been fine with like uh, the remake. Because it looked good. Okay. I'd be like, you know what? You acknowledge that you're doing something with it. That's fine. You got the original like artist. You got the you got the sound guy, dream team to oversee like blooper, which is great. Um, but like they gave us so much more, and a lot of it is take it or leave it. Like Townfall, I'm not sure what that is. I can't judge that yet. Same for Ascension. Uh, but F I think is like for me the big exciting part from that show and they had like this like woman that was covered in flowers so i think f just means flowers or fungus it could be fungus but yeah i'm very excited boys and again it's like and that team making that game they're a support studio Mm -hmm. that they've worked on resident evil ports and that reverse that like multiplayer game that they did Uh, resident evil yeah oh that's a problem i'm i'm again like (laughs) But they tapped like some really major writing talent for that. Sure. Like this this guy that they picked is like some like no one knows who he is. He's like this anonymous writer that did like this amazing visual novel, like the best rated visual novel ever. And there's like an anime and there's games on Steam for it. Highly rated. So he's an amazing horror writer. Um and the artist, I looked at her work, she's fucking talented as all fuck. So they nailed down those parts. I'm just wondering why they chose this support dev to make the next mainline entry it's a little strange it's fuckery 
Man, if here. there's one thing I've learned, it's Konami knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> they really do. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, couldn't, the one couldn't get through that. Um, Kickstarter of the week, ladies Andy. and gentlemen. Andy. Oh, yeah. Tell them oh, your Matt, secret. Matt had a thing to tell Matt me. has a secret. I love you so much, buddy. Don't break my heart. I've what never played a Silent Hill game. Andy's gone. He's left. Even I've played a Silent Hill game. <laughs> Even I have played a Silent Hill game. Never once. Wait, like not not a single one. Like not even Zero. not even like my friend Zero has Legend. it, and I sat with them and played it when we were kids. Matthew. Zero. I've played zero. I know. This is why it's not on the dock. You don't give a flying fuck about it. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm throwing the glasses Andy, down. We got the uh, Andy. Shocked. Save wait, wait. it. I love you. Save it. <laughs> Kickstarter of the week. Missed enough, you have chose chosen this one. It's Arrow GPX. This game looks so dope. That's loud this as shit. Okay, there we go. So dope. Uh, so this looks like uh, F-Zero on some weird aerial steroids. Sure. Um, it is literally just like a sci-fi super fast racer. Uh, it's more combat focused than, um, than like an F-Zero. But there are also like aerial slip streams is what they call them that you could fly through and get different power ups and like increase your speed by going in and out of them and it just looked I, I it looked so good i forget somebody i think posted this in either indies nuts or the indie game watch mm -hmm. and immediately i was like holy shit i want this game um it is so close to its goal with 27 days to go so i think it's yeah gonna oh it's gonna get it it's gonna get it it's getting it yeah there's there's no doubt and this game looks freaking insane yeah i'm gonna <laughs> play the shit out of this game ding, ding, this. Ding, ding, ding. um snake way yeah but uh dope. not the most impressive kickstarter page i've ever seen it's a pretty simple game yeah let's uh, scroll, know, scroll down let's scroll down a little bit the game, the game speaks for itself i exactly. feel like this yeah, is why you're buying into this it. this isn't a game it like you don't need to good. you don't need to sell me with all your mechanics and all that stuff or some like uh, concept art, like you know, yeah. here's like here's like our vision for this game. Show me how it plays. Yeah. And it looks um, the one of the stretch goals here that they that they have here half blocked is sound test. So I guess that's when you go on the menu and you can play all the music and sound effects, which I always loved from the old games. I love when they do that. I love how we're getting. We've gotten like a near perfect Star Fox successor with another mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. that came out that Steven loves so goddamn much. Uh, it's not, it's still in early access. <laughs> it's still, yeah, okay, either way. Oh, yeah, that's right, I forgot. And about then that we game. have this, like, F-Zero jammy right here, and it's like, Nintendo, you're sitting on, like... Gold. Gold. Yeah. Literal gold. And you're doing jack-all shit with it. Portable multiplayer F-Zero? Merciless, merciless AI Are opponents. Like, that's a gold mine. Yeah. Easy. Career Grand Prix local local multiplayer single race time trials practice thirty plus machines thirty pilots thirty tracks extras and unlockables robust accessibility. There's a universe. Look at this guy. This is a uh, bulk from from Power Rangers. He, <laughs> that, that's Doc <laughs> He, he, his angsty teen years what is happening it's this is a what if if bulk from power rangers became doc ock doc ock yeah but instead of doc ock he just look just at this doc headshot this is the guy that made made the soundtrack bam myroni bam. look at that man's face he is <laughs> so serious about this soundtrack how's it going the, the name's myroni I'm, I'm the darkness Anyway, it's my Danzig. It's my Danzig. Here's a. Uh, oh, they do have pi pilot art. Oh, here's here's the dev. Aaron Aaron Mac, Aaron McDivitt. It's the. Uh, I mean, that's not like a headshot. That's just like somebody took a you know a picture of him in it. <laughs> some guy on some vacation. mountains. So. Yeah, some yeah, no, he's, it's yeah. Doing, he's doing a location work. Yeah. There. He looks upset that he took the picture. Like, I uh, this. I'm it. I'm upset right now. Why? Because it's the end of the show. Go 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 pledge to this Kickstarter. Don't go pledging Kickstarters. Don't become part of the Matthew. problem. You Matthew, used. go fucking play Silent Hill, you goon. You I'm gonna play, goon. I want to play I Dungeons and Dragons first. Yeah. No. Thank you, Matt. 
Thank you, Andy. Thank you, listeners. Remember, you can follow us on social media. We're at dual underscore screens. I'm at Batch 27 Andy's at Pants Guy. And Matt is at Mr. Niff. Matt, That's right. It's time to go play Silent Hill. For, <laughs> give us a dollar on Patreon. Get it. get a daily bonus episode called go Steve's play. Thoughts. Sorry. Uh, I did four of them so far. Uh, get the pre-show for three dollars. Join our Discord. <laughs> All that fun stuff. We love you. And as always, please play some indies. <laughs> <laughs>